If you got sacked from your job, a job you liked, a job you were good at, and you felt there was no fair reason for being fired, what would you do? What you could do is take your case to an employment tribunal, which is where cases of unfair dismissal are scrutinised to see if your employer has broken the law. An employment tribunal also hears cases about redundancy, whistleblowers and discrimination. So if you are experiencing racism, sexual harassment or any other form of abuse or bullying at work and your complaints were not being taken seriously, an employment tribunal is the court that would take it seriously. And then your employer would have to take it very seriously. I'm visiting an employment judge in Birmingham to learn more. My name is Lorna Finlay. I'm an employment judge sitting in Birmingham. The Employment Tribunal basically deals with workplace disputes. It can be between an employer and an employee. We do all sorts of employment related cases. It can be anything from someone who's not been paid their wages to someone who is a whistleblower, for example, in the NHS to all sorts of discrimination claims, um, allegations of discrimination in the workplace, whether it's race discrimination or sex discrimination, sexual orientation, religion or belief, or all different types of protected characteristics um, from which people are protected against discrimination. And what's the best thing about being an employment judge? The best thing about it is the opportunity to influence how people are dealt with in the justice system. I think it can be very intimidating for people coming into a court or tribunal and sometimes they will, will appear against someone who has a far greater degree of legal knowledge and skill than they have. So it's a real privilege to um, be able to influence that process to ensure that people are able to put the best evidence forward. It may be that someone has a disability or some other reason that we need to make an adjustment to the proceedings. It's a real privilege to be able to be part of that and to do my best to make sure that there is a level playing field. It sounds like quite a rewarding job. Oh, very much so, very much so. Whatever the outcome at the end of the day, if you know that you have done your best to make sure that people put the best case forward and that you consider it carefully, that's, that's very rewarding indeed. What, in your opinion, makes a good judge? In my view, it's important that anyone who wishes to become a judge has the right qualities and attributes. And I would say that it's very important for a judge to be patient and calm and listen to what the parties are saying. Quite often as a judge, you will be faced with someone, if they're, particularly if they're unrepresented, but not always unrepresented parties, who will want to tell you a lot about why they found themselves in the situation that they are in. And that's important to them, and so it's important to listen, but also it's important to draw out from that what it is that is relevant to the case that you are hearing. So you should be patient and tolerant and listen to people. Um, keep an open mind. Don't have a look at whatever paperwork you've got in advance and make your mind up in advance, but listen to what you're being told because quite often tucked away there will be some gem of information which sheds a whole lot of light on the issues that you have to decide. Can you tell us something about your background and how you become a judge? I grew up in central Scotland not in a pretty part of Scotland, but in a medium-sized industrial town which had an oil refinery, a chemical refinery and docks. So not a picturesque place. I attended the local comprehensive school. I didn't know any lawyers. No one in my family seemed to know any lawyers. And I think it came as quite a big surprise to everyone in the family when I decided when I was 18 that I wanted to study law. My family were encouraging. I wouldn't say my school were necessarily encouraging, um, but uh, I managed to obtain a place, first of all, at Edinburgh University. I had decided that I would rather be an advocate, which is the Scottish version of a barrister, rather than a solicitor in Scotland. And I was told 
by people who knew much better than me that it would be difficult as a female lawyer and very expensive for me to try to become an advocate. So at that point, um, I went and got myself a job in the south of England. First of all, in Basildon as a welfare rights advisor, dealing with all sorts of benefits and housing problems. Then with the Child Poverty Action Group in London. And in the course of my work there, I conducted many tribunals with some degree of success, which encouraged me to apply to be a barrister. When I was a barrister, I enjoyed that very much. But I got to a point where I decided that really, um, I would like to take things a step further and try and become a judge, um, because I've always thought it was very important that people were treated equally and fairly by the justice system. And um, I wanted to have an opportunity to, to make sure that happened. Can you explain how an employment tribunal operates and who sits on the panel? In many cases in the employment tribunal and in most of the longer or more complicated cases, an employment judge like myself will sit with two non-legal members or panel members. One of them will broadly represent the interests of employees and one will re represent the interests of employers. But when we sit together as a panel, we take decisions jointly. None of us has um, got a bigger say than the others. We all put any personal interests we have to one side to try and, and reach a fair outcome for the parties um, who are appearing in front of us. When I sit with non-legal members, um, it's very much a joint effort and a team effort. I'm very much aware that whilst I may have the, the legal knowledge and, and skills, and I will be responsible for managing the case when the parties come before us and the, the witnesses give evidence, that we all have an equal say in the decision making. And if there is anything of importance that have to be decided, we do that as a team. The non-legal members will come from very different backgrounds to myself, but they will have a lot of industrial knowledge um, some of them come from a trade union background, but that's not necessarily the case if they represent um, employees broadly. Um, sometimes there will be individuals who've got human resources experience, but we do have a very wide variety of non-legal members. Some of them may, for example, come from the health service or the police or, or education. So they can all contribute things that maybe I can't. I can contribute the legal know-how and my knowledge of how to manage a case and they can contribute other things um, of their knowledge of their workplaces um, to help us all um, come to fair conclusions. I thought all judges wore wigs and gowns in court. I don't wear a wig and robes in the employment tribunal. I do have a wig and robes, but they're, they're at the bottom of my wardrobe these days. We have more informal proceedings in the employment tribunal, but we wear smart business wear uh, because everyone who comes here will expect us to look and behave professionally. Um, and as we deal with many di business disputes, that's, that's the, the style that, that we use here. Judges appear to have a lot of power. It is, I would say, a great responsibility. Whatever the court or tribunal is that you are sitting in, the people who come before you are very concerned about the issues that they face. In my own context, in the employment tribunal, the dispute that they have brought to us for us to make a decision about may have a very lasting effect on someone's career. It's unusual for a dispute which affects the workplace, not also to affect that individual's personal life and other aspects of their professional life. So I would say that everyone who's involved in the decision-making process here um, tries to remember that and make sure that we, we take the issues seriously and that we consider the evidence very carefully before making a decision, because we know that it can have long-lasting results for people. Why does the law matter? The law is there to make sure that people, so far as possible, 
are treated fairly in life. It affects all different aspects of an individual's life. It may be to keep them safe. It may be to ensure that they're treated fairly at work. Or it may be to ensure that there are proper standards, for example, in healthcare or education. So in my view, the, the function of the law is, so far as society thinks it's appropriate to um, regulate the relationships between individuals and make sure that people are treated fairly so far as possible. But the great thing about the judiciary is that it's a very flexible career. And as my family responsibilities changed, I increased my working hours, firstly to 18, 90, and, and then 100%, um, so that now, now I work full time. And I also have uh, leadership responsibilities, which are very rewarding, providing advice and support for, for other judges. Um, so it, it, it's been a great choice for me. Um, I've been doing it for about 10 years now, which has gone very swiftly, uh, and I have very much enjoyed it. It's also meant I have been able to balance my work and family responsibilities, not just for um, a child, but also for um, elderly relatives much better than I would have been able to had I remained um, practicing at the bar. Um, so, so it's been very good to me in that way. I hope this has given you a good insight into how an employment tribunal works, what it's like to be a judge and the skills needed to do the role. As you've seen, you don't need to be a lawyer to do this important work. Other panel members have different areas of expertise. In the next film, you may be interested to hear more from a lay member whose background is a career in human resources.